Hi everybody, welcome to Scuba Diving Magazine. We're looking at buying a new scuba diving wetsuit and a few sneaky tips that may help you choose the best wetsuit for you. The first thing is that most people ask is, yes, scuba diving wetsuits are a bit different to other wetsuits. Yes, of course, you can wear a surfing wetsuit to go scuba diving, but they're not as effective at keeping you warm. They're designed to keep you warm on the surface, not submerged for long periods. Scuba diving wetsuits tend to have more scuba specific features as well that are better suited for scuba diving but in this video I'm going to list a few things to look for and how to know if you have the right size. One cool thing that you'll find on most wetsuits, except for shorties, is a thermal rating. Somewhere on the inside, usually on the label, sometimes it's printed to the neoprene itself, but to get the coveted CE rating, wetsuits are tested and then graded on an ABCD scale if they're intended for the use of scuba diving. A is the best and whilst I suppose unrated is the worst, um, but the rest of the grades determine how much insulation the suit provides. It's quite complicated, um, but basically A is good, B is not as good, C is a little bit not as good and D is a little bit not as good even more. So now just because you throw an A rated wetsuit on doesn't necessarily mean it's going to keep you warm. A lot of factors such as fit and the seals around your cuffs and your ankles will help to boost that and if a wetsuit doesn't fit then there's almost no point in wearing one. A well fitted C wetsuit will be keeping you will be better at keeping you warm than a loose fitting a but if you're stuck between two different five mil suits and they both seem very similar to you they both fit quite nicely but one's rated d where the other one is rated b the thermal rating can help you make that decision between those two suits <music> The thickness of a wetsuit is the best way to determine its warmth, or at least where it's intended to be used. Exactly what thickness to choose depends on your constitution, unfortunately. Depends on how much you feel the cold or how long the dive is going to be. But as a general temperature range, if you can handle the cold quite well, as much as the next guy, and you're not going for like uber long two, three plus hour dives, you're just going for like a standard one hour dive, then mid twenties to early 30 degrees Celsius, most divers are wearing either three mil shorties, a one mil full suit, or even just rash vests and board shorts because the water's quite warm. Shorties help to just take the edge off especially on longer dives they give you a bit of extra like protection from bumps and scrapes but they have nothing over the your arms and your legs so if you brush up against some fire coral that's still gonna suck uh, but with a, a, a full suit that's gonna protect your arms and legs from the sun above you as well as scrapes and stings in the water Low 20s is like three mil full suit territory. Of course, if you already have a three mil suit, you can wear it in warmer waters. Uh, it just means you're gonna be a bit warmer when you're above the water because you've got more insulation on. Five mil suits are the real Goldilocks of wetsuits. Low 20s to mid teens, mid teens and downwards to about 10 degrees celsius you're going to want a seven mil maybe even a semi-dry but if you regularly dive in these colder temperatures or below or longer dives then a lot of divers naturally transition to dry suits they require a bit more training but they're more efficient and if you are prone to feeling the cold then shift all of those temperatures by about five degrees upwards it depends where you're likely to dive the most, what temperature range you're gonna dive in the most and how much you feel the cold. A lot of divers will get a five mil full suit and a three or a two and a half mil shorty and that's a good temperature range covered. You can do a lot with that combination of wetsuit.
There are plenty of neoprene alternatives out there today. It's not just neoprene. Um, wonderful if you have a neoprene allergy, because a lot of people do, and some have some quite clever and useful features and attributes. First, you have material suits, such as fourth element thermocline, shark skin, lava core, and others, which are usually a three layer material with a soft inside layer that goes against your skin, a semi-permeable mid layer, and then a flexible outer layer. And these are neutrally buoyant. So unlike a, a wetsuit, you don't need to add any lead to compensate for these because they don't sink or float. And they're usually equivalent, most people think they're about equivalent to like a two mil neoprene suit. So warmer waters, but still it's just something to protect you and it's neutrally buoyant. Today we also have plant-based neoprenes, uh, such as Ulex, which is much better for the planet. Uh, it isn't quite as flexible as some other neoprenes, but divers do find it just as warm. So it's a nice environmentally friendly option. And you're starting to see that in more and more brands nowadays. If you can, it's best that you can actually touch and feel the neoprene or the neoprene alternative. You can tell a lot just by the, the feel of the neoprene. So try to visit your local dive center and actually touch some of the suits before you actually buy them. The internal lining of a wetsuit is one of the more important features that you don't always see from just the internet picture. Uh, if you look at freediving wetsuits, they often don't have any internal lining. It's just raw neoprene that's called open cell. Open cell really sticks and clings to your skin and it probably is the best at keeping you warm in the water because free divers and like spear fishermen they wear these because they're going to be in the water for long periods of time so open cell is very efficient at keeping you warm however it can be very very hard to get in the suit without some kind of lubricant literally i'm not joking um, and raw neoprene is quite fragile the internal and external lining is there to actually protect the neoprene in a lot of cases from tearing if it's pulled when you're trying to pull it on you can often tell if someone's damaged their suit because there's this very distinct crescent uh, shape uh, like cut in that neoprene a standard lining on the inside and out is very common on most wetsuits and yeah it's really there to make it a lot easier to put on and to protect the neoprene from damage. On nicer, more expensive wetsuits though, you will start to see this lining change over the torso, over your chest and over your back to a thicker material that helps, it's more absorbent, so it slows water movement and it in turn keeps you warmer. So if you take a five mil wetsuit with a standard lining that you get on the inside and out and then a five mil wetsuit with a better internal lining the second one should keep you warmer it is vitally important that you get the right fit of your wetsuit a wetsuit that's too small is going to restrict movement and prevent you from reaching things uh, they can also cut off blood flow as well uh, to your hands that's not great because your hands go numb. Uh, if it's too tight around the neck, your head's gonna go numb. Uh, that's just a terrible thing all around. And around your chest as well, the ability to fully breathe properly, no, too small, very, very bad. Too large and the cold water is just gonna flush in and out of the suit, negating the whole point of the wetsuit. Wetsuits work best when they let a small amount of water in and then hold it against your body for insulation. If cold water keeps flushing that warm water that your body's just heated up, you're just wasting body heat. So it's gotta fit properly. So when you're trying on a wetsuit, go by the size chart uh, try to make sure that you'll fit into each of the sections. Most wetsuits have a little bit of give and stretch, but if one line is too tight, then it's best to go up a size. Uh, pop that suit on, 
start at the ankles and don't rush. A lot of divers tend to rush, especially when they're in a dive store, to try and like get it on as quickly as possible, and, but actually half of the wetsuit is still around their ankles. So make sure that the wetsuit is on and it's not bunching up at any point. Check the knee pads are in the right place, they're over your knees, and then just work your way up nice and slowly. This can suck if you're trying to put on like a seven mil semi-dry suit in the middle of summer, but it's best to make sure that you get the right size first. Give it, once it's on, give it some rugby shoulders as well. Roll those shoulders so that the, the neoprene just kind of it stretches to make sure that it's all in the right place. And then if you take one knee on the floor, if you can still reach and touch the back of your neck with minimal resistance, you'll probably get some resistance, but as long as you can touch the back of your neck as if you're reaching for your cylinder valve, then the wetsuit fits quite well. If it feels tight or uncomfortable anywhere, it might be too small. Pockets are an amazing feature to find on a wetsuit. They're still quite rare. You don't see them on a lot of wetsuits nowadays, but some wetsuits do have built in, or at least the, bit, the ability to fit thigh pockets that give you some extra storage in a very convenient place. There are only a handful of suits out there, as I said, that do have pockets, and it tends to be the thicker suits because they're a bit more of an investment. So don't expect to see a lot of them out there on the market, but if you do see some kind of detailing on the thigh, see if you can fit a pocket to the suit. What a lot of divers do today on a suit that you can't fit a, a pocket to or doesn't come with them is invest in a pair of tech shorts or thigh pockets. They're basically a pair of neoprene or canvas shorts that you wear over the top of your wetsuit or just over your board shorts so that you do have some storage. You just need to be sure that they're nice and snug around their waist so that if you put something heavy in the pockets, they don't slip down to your ankles. One thing that you can't see in an online photograph is just how stretchy a wetsuit is or isn't. I've spoken about neoprene alternatives, but when it comes to neoprene, there are many different blends of neoprene, and some of them are really, really flexible, which has quite a few benefits. First of all, it's easier to just move around in the suit and you can reach things more easily, but it also makes it easier and a bit more forgiving when you're putting it on. It can be a little bit annoying when you're trying to pull on a stretchy suit and it just stretches. Uh, it doesn't move where you want it to. You've got to really coax it into position. But if the size chart seems that it might be a little bit small or you kind of overindulge at Christmas time, it might be worth trying it on at least. You also want as little stitching as possible. The stitching through the different neoprene panels is the least flexible part of a wetsuit besides the zipper itself. So look for large open panels of neoprene. If you don't fit into the standard off the shelf, small, medium or large sizes, you can always go down the custom fit wetsuit route if you really want to, but it can be quite expensive. But before you send your details and you order yourself a fully made custom suit, keep looking because a lot of manufacturers, especially the larger manufacturers, have more comprehensive size ranges now. So instead of just small, medium and large, you'll often see LS, LB, LT and sometimes LR sizes along with standard L. So L is large, that's your stock L, but you also get LS, which is large short. You get LB, which can be large broad, LT, large tall, and LR, which is large relaxed. Some, the, uh, the, the second word is often different uh, depending on the manufacturer, but yeah, it's always been a problem if you're tall and skinny, that you either have a suit that fits your height, but it's too baggy, or a suit that fits your body, but it's a few inches too short in the legs. Most dive centers, they're probably not gonna carry each of these unique sizes, um, but they should be able to order them in for you if the manufacturer still has them in stock. So if you found a suit that you like the look of, 
find the size chart on the manufacturer's website because they'll include all of the different sizes that they make and see which sizes they make see if you can fit into a better one of those different sizes and if you can find the part number as well write that down the manufacturer's part number your dive center will certainly thank you because you're going to walk in and you can say okay and this is the exact part number i need they don't have to go through the entire list and try and make sure that they get the right one so if you can try and find that manufacturer's part number Next, you'll see suits that are called semi-dry wetsuits or just semi-dries. They'll be thicker wetsuits and they often have integrated hoods as well and a zipper across the chest sometimes. Um, semi-dries are for colder water diving where you don't want to wear a dry suit, but they're not as efficient as a dry suit. What they are good for is keeping you dry for the first portion of the dive and then they just act like a normal wetsuit. They let some water in and they just use that water as insulation. They tend to have better seals around the cuffs, around the zipper to slow any water movement in, more so than a traditional wetsuit. So that way they're, they're like a top tier wetsuit. They're good for long dives in colder waters or in warm waters where you're diving a long, long time, um, especially if there's a risk of damaging the suit. So if you're in like a cramped shipwreck or uh, overhead environments where you've got sharp rock formations or something and you're likely to damage the suit, damaging a dry suit would be catastrophic because it's gonna let water in. But if you rip your semi-dry, you're just a little bit more wet. It's still gonna keep you warm. Semi-dries are just super wetsuits. They're, they're the apex of wetsuits, but at this level, there's a fair amount of overlap with dry suits in that temperature range, which of course require extra training. So yeah, they are a good choice, but a lot of people skip over them and just go straight to dry suits. Scuba diving wetsuits have features specifically for scuba diving. Go figure. Uh, you should see reinforced sections over the shoulders as your BCD shoulder straps can rub and it's gonna wear your wetsuit. So if you have a surfing wetsuit, it's gonna wear out on the shoulders pretty quickly. Um, some also have wrist detailing that help keep your dive computer in place, which is a really nice feature, especially if you just invested in a really expensive dive computer and do, doing that giant stride entry, you don't want it to slip off of your wrist. Layered cuffs as well are good for cold water diving if you're diving with gloves and boots. They let you layer them up to slow water ingress so that you can stay a bit warmer. For cold waters, you can also find systems, which are basically wetsuits that come with a matching oversized shorty that you wear over the top for extra warmth over your core. So it'll be a five mil suit and then a five mil shorty that goes over the top. So you've got five mil on your extremities, but then 10 mil over your core. And Another one for cold water is liquid seams. So most fancier wetsuits have blind stitch in their stitching. So the stitch doesn't go all the way through the neoprene so that water can't seep through to get inside. But glued stitching means that there is even harder for water to seep through. They basically put this, uh, this liquid glue over the stitching and then it solidifies and Another benefit is if the stitching is cut or worn in that one area, it's not gonna unravel like open stitching would do. So yeah, spend some time looking around online. You're sure to find a fair few scuba diving wetsuits out there. Uh, for a head start, you can check out one of our affiliate dive stores. If you click up here in the corner, this link is gonna take you to an online dive store near you, but have a good shop around and try to go for substance over style. Sure, some, web, uh, some wetsuits are gonna have some real funky designs, but it's, it's what's in the inside that counts. Uh, you can't always just go for the design or the color of the wetsuit. It kind of has to be the right neoprene and especially the right fit. 
you have any questions, pop them down in the comment section below and remember to check out our website, scubadivermag.com, where we keep you up to date with all the latest scuba diving news and of course, subscribe to the channel and consider becoming a channel member. We just uploaded an exclusive video with Ross Kemp that only channel members can view. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.